Good morning, everyone. This is Nicole from Simply Newborn Photography. I just wanted to come on here and show you a really quick edit. Um, one of my very favorite kind of sessions are the roly poly little six month sitter sessions. Um, you know, the babies are so chubby and covered in rolls and full of smiles. And uh, I usually wait until the babies can sit up. So sometimes they're closer to seven months, but you get that. Um, fun, laying on my back, free play time, you get the sitting up. They're still small enough to kind of fit in bowls and buckets and baskets and all of that thing. And they're just, they're just so adorable at this age. But I wanted to come on here and show you. Um, I always try to have a parent close by to the baby when they are up on the backdrop stand here in my studio. Excuse me. Um, Sometimes it's necessary to remove them from the image. I'd rather have a baby safe and have to take out a leg and an arm than have this sweet little bub roll right off. So I'm going to get started editing here. First thing I'm going to do is make sure I'm actually in my screen. <laughs> um, I'm going to add a new layer. And I'm going to just straighten this out and zoom it in to kind of my liking here. And I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to flatten that layer. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on getting mom out. Sorry, mom. We love you, but you got to go. So what I'm going to do, sorry, I'm going fast. I'm not telling you what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to pick my rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to select little by little. I'm going to hit fill selection and use the content aware option. This is going to try to guess what is around it and it's going to fill it and you're going to have to kind of work with it here. So I'm just going to go little by little. We're going to have to go back and fix this because you can really tell it was a patch job. Um, one of the biggest things I see in even very popular photographers is a repeated pattern where they've cloned something. Um, most of your clients will never see it but it drives me absolutely bonkers. So. I'm going to go back and fix it. We're going to take her arm out. It's Sometimes it's a time-consuming process. Sometimes it happens really fast. You can see the computer's figuring out, oh, she doesn't want that arm there. We're going to turn her into the background color. Now, we're going to go back in a minute and paint over this. So if it's leaving everything looking kind of blotchy and botched, it's okay because there's another step. But we're just going to keep cracking at it. You can use your clone tool for this, but this just is easier for me. Okay, so now she's mostly out of there. We're going to go back in. I don't know what I did there. Sorry. Um, go back. Oh, that's what I'm doing wrong. Sorry. I'm going to go back in with my brush. I'm going to make it probably about 25%. Nice and big. And I'm going to pick something I did not clone. So I'm going to pick something over here on the wood and just kind of swipe it around. See how it kind of blends now? All right, the next thing I'm going to do is just clean up this rug. So I'm going to hit my clone stamp tool and I'm going to choose this fuzz around him and just kind of, oops, I don't want his booty. Um, good gracious, I haven't had enough caffeine, I apologize. Um, I'm just going to kind of select and just kind of poke around in here, get this to look a little more natural, um, like we didn't do anything to it. You see how there's the repeating pattern over and over? So what I would do if it's doing that is I would just use my spot healing tool and just kind of randomly go around. The computer's going to fill it in so it doesn't look like a repeated pattern. Now, something you can do, I can still really see where her foot was. Most people won't see it. I can see it. it drives me insane. I'm going to fix it. So I'm going to select a color from over here in the wood, and I'm just going to kind of swipe the carpet. Then I'm going to come to the other side, and I'm going to pick a lighter color, and just kind of do the whole frame, just to kind of soften it up. Then I'll make it a little bigger, a little less opacity, and I'm going to choose the brightest color I can find. Whoops, I zoomed and I didn't know it. Um, and I'm going to just swipe around the entire image, just softening it up. So sweet little guy is our main focus here. The only other thing I would do to this would be to zoom in on his skin. Just kind of check for things like butt cracks and 
chunks and eyeballs, little cuts. Sometimes they cut themselves at this age with their little fingernails. I'm gonna use this spot healing tool that just kind of go in there. Eyes are tricky, be careful around eyes. Um, just go around and touch up anything that looks a little off. His little man bits are showing, so I'm gonna see if I can get that kind of, you know, a little more hidden behind a, a bum. Sometimes yeah, that looks a little better. Sometimes it uh, will look like a roll. Sometimes it will look like, you know, hey, here's my stuff. You don't really want to see that. Sorry, little man boys. We don't want to see your junk. So then I'm, anytime you use spot healing, I'd go back and just gently brush with a brush just to kind of eliminate the possibility of there being rigid marks that shouldn't really be there. Okay, the very last thing I'm going to do to him is just smooth his skin a little bit. I'm going to pick this really bright color on him, his highlight, and just kind of swipe it around. Not too much because he's a little boy. Little girls, I might do a little more, but you don't want them to look plastic. I mean, maybe you do, but I don't. Then I would just kind of swipe his little skin, especially since this is a full body shot. Just kind of clean him up. Um, you know, 17 to 20% is enough. Anything more, you're going to lose the detail in his skin. And you definitely don't want that. And the very last thing I would do to a sweet little babe like this would be to use a sharpening action and go back over all his little nooks and crannies, all his little little baby wrinkles, all his little folds, just hit that at 100% and then go back and lower and just kind of really bring out the detail in all his little bits there. And you can see it looks a little funky when it's on 100%, but it'll look better in a second. Um, just kind of hit all those little spots. I wouldn't do this on every shot, but this one is more about the details of his little wrinkly, chubby, wubby body. So I would definitely want to hit those just to make them highlighted. Um, you can kind of hit his little eye a little. Careful on eyes and lips. You can go around the nostrils, of course, those gorgeous lashes. I don't know why boys always get the best lashes. It's not fair, boys, it's not fair. You can hit his hair with a sharpening. Um, his little ear. Okay, and then I'm gonna zoom out and show you it looks a little ridiculously strong, so I'm going to actually change it in a second, but I just wanted to show you. See, he looks a little pixelated because he's too sharp, so I'm going to take it down to at least 50%. It looks so much better. I'm actually going to go 30. looks a little better, actually 20, and I'm going to brush some of this off his toes because it's a really, really strong up here. It's too strong for me. So I'm just using my black brush just to kind of unsharpen what I sharpened up here. Okay, I'm gonna flatten that. I'm gonna run my recipe of actions and homemade things that I made and that would be the final image for him. Something else I may do is do a black and white conversion on this. Um, Greater Than Gatsby has some um, amazingly delicious black and white actions. Here's one of theirs. Let me let that run. Oh, and that's just tasty. But I would save this, give this to mom. Love it, love it, love it. Thank you for watching.